Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this amazing corporate forum, to this symposium, and I wish all of us a pleasure stay during the next days. Um, I'd like to start with a case presentation uh, to complete digital implant workflow with a share site solution. And complete digital workflow, what does it mean? Just in the beginning, it does mean without any physical models. So we are living in a real virtual world from the beginning to the end, from A to Z. So as shown and introduced by German Gallucci, we have these uh, pictograms, these eight steps, and I'd like to guide you to follow all these pictograms, these steps for this workflow for a single unit implant restoration. First of all, we have to start for sure with a kind of treatment plan. So we already introduced this 2012 and published this 2013 in collaboration with the Department of Oral Surgery with Danny Buza. And it's a five step approach with three appointments, clinical appointments for our patients. So starting with a cone beam computer tomography, a CBCT, and a virtual intraoral scanning. Then we have the planning with the co diagnostics and without any models anymore, so we make a virtual planning in a prosthetic driven backward planning. Then we have the guided surgery, and in addition, a second intraoral scan, capturing the final three dimensional implant position. Then we have the kind of laboratory step, share site, lab site, whatever you want, and the final restoration, the delivery, and the third patient contact. German, may I ask you, in Bern, our patients, so they like to be treated in a more convenient way and in a streamlined way. And do you like this approach just to shorten this? I, I think that for single unit restoration, it's a very attractive approach. And, and the more we use this technology, you can really see that, that that's the way to go here. Yeah. I think that's really important for this kind of indication to streamline the entire process. And now we have a validated workflow, seamless, hand in hand, that works. So let's start with the clinical case. This is the initial situation. It was a, a milk tube for the second milk molar. It has to be extracted. And so we had the situation that there's a congenital absence of the tube, of the permanent tube. So it's a ideal situation placing an implant in this 33-year-old male. So we start for sure, first of all, with a clinical assessment. Here you see the scenario in our clinic, combining intraoral scanning devices, different devices, share site milling, the co-diagnostics, virtual implant planning, and um, then we go on with the uh, generating of the data. And at this, we need for a complete digital workflow, again, a DICOM file, cone beam CT, and an SDL file gathered from an optical scan. Then, there is the next crucial step to merge both information. So we use the program, co-diagnostics, for virtual implant planning to merge the SDL file, as you see in pink on the right, and on the left, the DICOM file. So we need at least three pointed, related to each other, and then we can merge them or superimpose them uh, for the next crucial steps that we need for the planning. Here you see it, and it's really important to, to have for the cone beam CT at least in the opposite arch the information because we want to create all virtual. Have in mind, we do not have any physical models anymore, so we just work with the things we have digital in our computer. So here are the steps, just uh, roughly. Uh, I go through these steps because Gary will show that later on as a surgeon more in detail. But we start with the 3D rendering of the cone beam CT. We have to segment it, have to isolate our um, important area. So this is the mandible in this case. Then the next step is the superimposition again. And here we, you see the, the planning of the tube. That doesn't represent the final restoration. It's just the planning interacting with the dental technician, with the surgeon, with the prosthodontic part to work in a seamless flow. 
and then we can place underneath in the correct position, in the correct 3D position, the implant. We can see already the uh, abutment structure if we want, and now we have to move from the virtual world to the real. And that is why we need a transfer of this situation and build up and design a virtual guide, and then it's printed later on, or you can mill it, whatever you want. So here is now uh, based on the SDL file. On the left, you see the design, and that is why these guides have a nice fitting uh, clinically. And so here's the printed one with the sleeve inside for a fully guided implant placement approach. These are now the surgical steps, again, in collaboration with our partners from the Department of Oral Surgery. And um, Gary, may I ask you, as an expert for surgeries and implant dentistry, do you agree with this three-dimensional positioning of the implant? Yes, absolutely. I think here you are meeting the expectation and the requirement from the surgical side as well as from the prosthetic uh, side. So I think it's, I would not change anything on it. For sure. Thanks. That's a straightforward and in kind of, let's say, simplified way and case. And, but I like it to have an implant restoration that's crew retained. What do you think, Vincent, as a dental technician? Is it possible in this position? Absolutely. Looking at the plant angulation of the implant, we are for sure will be able to end up with a screw retained uh, reconstruction. Okay. So um, this is important at our clinic and the University of Bern as well. So we have the interaction in the entire team in an interdisciplinary approach. So here you see it's a minimally invasive treatment, just to raise up uh, a small flap, and then we proceed with a fully guided procedure with the pilot drills. Then the next slides will show the uh, subsequent order of the drilling procedure, and then you see the final positioning of the implant and the X-ray and the transmucosal healing because it's straightforward without any GBR procedure. That's pretty uh, and it straightforward case. So the next step is now to capture the three-dimensional position. Even if we planned it in advance with our um, virtual planning software, with the co-diagnostics, now we need to transfer it and capture it. And for the digital impression technology, now I'd like to show you here on the video these two devices. They're really uh, handy devices in a kind of video mode, and it's uh, really fast moving and simplified the application for the dentist and for the patient as well. The next step then is to screw in the scan body. That's for both of the systems the same way to capture the three-dimensional positioning. And for posterior sites using here tissue level implant, it's pretty easy to do so. And the third step now is to capture this scan body and then the software automatically merges the initial scan without the scan body and then the second scan with the scan body itself. So we did a study in collaboration with the University of Basel and we asked uh, 50 students, undergraduate students, they were not familiar with any kind of impression taking procedures and uh, 50 uh, dentists experienced in implant dentistry, but not with digital technology. And it was a randomized controlled uh, trial. And so they had in a phantom model situation to capture a single implant uh, with both uh, approaches. And afterwards, we asked them about their preference for this situation. And here you see the dental students who are playing with some um, smartphones, iPads, and are familiar with the digital world, they, uh, as shown here, preferred 76% uh, the digital approach in contrast to the dentist. Uh, Hermann, I think you did a study as well. What's your experience at uh, Boston? Sim similar study, same results. Uh, students in particular, uh, the young generation will absorb this technology so quickly that I am not surprised to see That's this. That's our experience in the same way. And here you see, in an easy way, it, it's playable. So our students, they laugh at it. And just remember, if you take a conventional impression, if there's something, a bubble or something, a distortion in the impression, then you have to take everything alone. And it takes a lot of time, and it's annoying for the patient. And, and here you see it's such easy with this uh, device and uh, maybe just 
to do just this minor part again. And uh, in another study of uh, our team, an RCT, we asked about the perception of our patients. Um, both of them received the conventional and the digital impression-taking procedures. And all of the patients said in this randomized control trial, uh, they favor the digital approach. So both ways works, but I think this is the trend uh, for the future in dentistry. Then we have to decide what about the design for the restoration. I already mentioned we like it in a screw retained and for this uh, straightforward case and the posterior. So I think it's favorable to have a monolithic restoration. So the risk for shipping is reduced. We have a prefabricated uh, abutment here, the vario base style. And so we can move on in an easy way and for sure in a screw retention because then it's easy, clean, well applicable as a dentist. And here you see the designing for uh, me as a dentist. Even this is easy in a share side uh, solution. For the uh, design, you can see here gathered on the initially uh, captured implant position with the scan body and the monolithic design for screw retention again. So the, the workflow, now you have to consider for the production, what does it mean? So we start with the scanning device. Then you decide as a dentist, and this is now the freedom we have, do I want to work in a conventional way, starting in a conventional way and with an in-lab scanning solution or a sh share site intraoral scanning solution, then processing this uh, data, these STL files, then you can choose for the design. Do I want to do this in a, my own uh, practice as a dentist or I work together with a dental technician? And for the manufacturing, then we have for sure at this time maybe uh, more or less the milling solution. But then we have to distinguish two ways. We have closed systems and all these ways, it's just stick together uh, in an entire system. Or we have an open way and that's more attractive for me in a university because I can decide each step where I can pick the data and put it on and I'm totally flexible and I have all the options in this workflow. So for the production of this case, now I have the option to work like a disk I choose this as a zirconium um, a disk. Then we have to go for a centralized or in-lab solution. Or in contrast, you see on the right, the nice material for the CAD CAM blocks we have chosen here for our solution in a share site milling, as you can see with this device. And uh, I'd like to address the question to you as a dental technician, uh, Vincent. You're feeling afraid like this technology that we have a workflow seamless for the dentist share site solution? Or do you think this is the right indication for this? No, afraid is maybe the wrong word to address it. But it's definitely something that will change our profession. And the single reconstruction will be maybe to a, to a big percentage end up being done share site. Yeah. Especially with blanks like this, which you don't have to sinter afterwards. That's the big advantage. Already prepared with a hole for screw retention and uh, you don't need, as mentioned, uh, the second sintering. So I think this is a really big advantage for us as a dentist in the private practice. So the post-processing is pretty easy. You can now decide uh, starting there on the left, this is uh, like the monolithic milled restorations, or you can say I want to uh, paint it a little bit and glazing or polishing only, whatever you want, you have the freedom for this material and this workflow. Now I'd like to come to the uh, final restoration. Again, we use the prefabricated abutment, the titanium base, then the monolithic design with the nice material, screw retention, and then uh, the occlusal view from a clinical uh, view, there you see it's already uh, a closure with composite. So sometimes you hear, oh, as a clinician, I don't want to touch the surface or it's especially in the mandible. It's uh, aesthetic concerns for the patient if you have a screw access. But I think with these modernized materials now, we are able just to hide this access uh, as you can see here. So in the next minutes, I'd like to, to follow and like to present maybe some scientific evidence. At this time, the technological process 
is so fast, so it's a really a problem for us at the university to, to give you a proof of that, because the turnover every two years or even every year, it's so fast. So we had an ITI grant and we focused the question of monolithic implant uh, crowns following a complete digital workflow, as shown this case before, and in comparison to a mixed digital analog workflow. Honestly, today, all the workflows using a kind of a digitization uh, tool, at least maybe for milling a kind of abutment structure. So uh, that is why we want to know according to different aspects. First of all, mechanical stability. So here you see the study setup. It's in posterior um, sites, and we had a tissue level implant, and then the prefabricated titanium abutment and the individualized titanium abutment, different monolithic materials at this time, and then in vitro testing for the loading. This is a standardized testing, as you know, uh, if you're familiar with such of uh, in-lab testing procedures, and here you see the load displacement curves for the test group, and it's above 1,000 Newton for the force parameter, and here you see for the control group, yes, there is a difference. It's statistically significant, but doesn't make any influence for us as a clinician for the choice, no. If you have a look at the physiological bite force, then we're far away, and so we decided in this stepwise approach for this in vitro testing that works, so now we can move on for clinical studies and make an RCT. So this is now the uh, ITI grant I'd like to show you. And so we had in a posterior site for single restorations and at least adjacent teeth, mesial and distal and occlusal contacts. Then we digitized this. This was already 2013. That is why we used here a different intraoral scanning device. Afterwards, we had the randomization process, the complete digital workflow you see above, and then a milled model situation for this combined mixed analog digital workflow. And then the final setting of the uh, restoration as a second clinical appointment. So for time efficiency, because this is really important for you as a clinical practitioner, uh, you don't have to uh, look at the small numbers just to see the scale and where you can reduce the time and that's especially for the fabrication process but you can also reduce the time for the clinical appointment to seat the final restoration and maybe you win two minutes but that's not the big issue uh, the big issue for me is if you have a look at this graphs so for the test groups in a con complete digital workflow, we do not have to adjust anything. So neither for interproximal areas or for the occlusal surface. And that's an advantage for me, uh, not only the time aspect, I don't have to scratch or modify the surface again and don't have to decide, do I have to polish it again, do I have to glaze it again, and that makes it easier and maybe a lower risk for anything else for the long-term data. And so we... Uh, already know, so the technological progress, as mentioned, is so fast, but now let's have a look at success rates, and I'd like to show you 50 restorations, uh, monolithic implant crowns, and we invented our own um, uh, functional implant prosthodontic score here, and it combines clinical as well as radiological parameters, and we have five categories uh, there implemented for interproximal, for occlusion, for the design, for the mucosa and the bone. And then we rated it together and correlated it again with our patient for the subjective perception of our patients. And here you see the coefficient is pretty high with 0 0.9 almost. So we have a nice correlation of this objective uh, treatment protocol and our patients' perceptions. I'd like to come to an end and conclude this uh, scientific evidence from our Bernice group. And um, the complete digital workflow does shorten 50% of the entire work time and is possible to reduce 33% of the production cost in comparison to the mixed digital analog workflow. In previous studies, we investigated the comparison to the uh, purely conventional workflow with the lost wax technique and PFM 
uh, crowns. So then it's even higher. And the complete digital workflow does fulfill 100% of the patient satisfaction. And at least for three years of loading, we can show a 100% success rate. Let's come to an end, and here you see the pictograms of this workflow stepwise, all these eight steps, and we used it in this share site solution for posterior single unit restorations for the convenient protocol of our patients in a seamless workflow. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> very nicely done.